This is a pre-algebra lesson 6.1, adding rational numbers. So Bob Jones University Press pre-algebra lesson 6.1, adding rational numbers. All right, so 6.1, 6.1, and I just got my whole lesson to disappear. That's not good. All right, having trouble with my start menu here. All right, so uh, 6.1 is adding rational numbers. And again, remember, when you see rational numbers, you should be thinking of what? Fractions. Fractions. So rational numbers, you should be thinking fractions. Rational numbers, think fractions. OK? All right, the rule. And the rule is really, really, really important. Um, how do you add fractions? How do you do that? Well, you add the numerators and you put them over the common denominator. That's how you add fractions. So I'm going to take my blue, blue A there, take my black for the plus sign, take my green for the B, right? I'm adding the numerators, the A plus the B, and I'm putting it over that common X denominator, right? Add the numerators and put them over the common denominator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem right here. Add the numerators and put them over the common denominator. All right, so that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to do in this box 7 plus 3, right? I'm adding the numerators and I'm putting them over the common denominator. Now, notice what I've said right here. Always show the rule step. Always, 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 always show the rule step. What am I trying to do here? I'm trying to get to the point to where you're going to remember that rule step. And, and the, what happens with fractions is you get confused. OK, are we adding fractions? Are we multiplying fractions? Are we dividing? Are we dealing with a proportion where we're cross multiplying? What are we doing? And so what ends up happening is you get confused. And I don't want you to get confused. And to help you to not get confused, I'm going to tell you to always show the rule step. Always show the rule step. Always show the rule step. OK, so once you show the rule step, now we can go ahead and add that numerator and put it over. That should be in black and put it over that common denominator. OK, but I want to see the rule step. Always show. Can I be any clearer? Always show the rule step. Always show the rule step. Always show the rule step. OK, very, very, very important. OK, let's uh, do a couple more examples here. So again, you look at example one, and if you want to do it on your own, go ahead and pause the tape um, or the recording here, and then you can continue on. All right, so what are we going to do? Add the numerators. So I'm showing the rule step in the blue box. I'm adding the numerators, putting them over the common denominator, a little bit of positive and negative. So let's go back here and catch this blank here. Always keep track of the positives and negatives, right? Always keep track of your positive and negatives. Now we've done this, and you guys are good at your positive and negatives by now. And so you look at this, and you say nine negatives and three positives is going to leave you six negatives, right? And we're going to put that over the common denominator of 11, and you get negative six elevenths. Okay? Second situation, we have an 11 plus a negative 19. Show the rule step all over the common denominator. And you look at this, say 11 positives and 19 negatives leaves you 8 negatives. Solution, negative 8 fifths. All right, look, fractions are not hard, especially in these that we're doing today where you already have a common denominator. Add the numerators and put them over the common denominator. So in all of these, we already have a common denominator that makes life a little bit easier. OK, C, C, always look to see if it can be reduced. Once you go ahead and add the numerators and put them over the common denominator, just be careful, make sure to see if it can be reduced or not. If it can be reduced, then we're going to need to reduce it. All right, so let's do this example. Again, if you want to do it on your own, go ahead and pause the video. So negative 5 plus a negative 7 all over the common denominator of 16. Add the numerators 
and put it over the common denominator, five negatives and seven more negatives is 12 negatives, and we end up with 12 sixteenths. Now, again, my advice, you know this is a negative divided by a positive. You know your solution is going to be negative. I'd stick it there already. All right, we're going to reduce what is a 12, a 3 times 4, and what is a 16, a 4 times 4, and our 4s divide out, right? 4 divided by 4 is 0, and what do we end up with? A negative 3 fourths, okay? So you got to look to reduce. you got to look to reduce. You've got to look to reduce. All right, let me get rid of my shade so I can get the page a little bit higher. Okay, so what if it's subtraction? If you notice here now, We've got A over X minus B over X. Well, it's no big deal. It's really adding. It's the exact same concept, right? So in this case, you're going to take your A and you're going to take your B, and instead you're going to have a minus sign between them. You're still going to put them over the common denominator of X. So it's A minus B over X. All right? Piece of cake, no sweat. Pretty easy to do. Let's do a couple examples here below. All right, so you look, you already have a common denominator. That's good. That's what you want, right? Got to have that common denominator. We do. Let's go ahead and add the numerators. So 5 minus sine 10 over 16. Now, we've done numbers of these problems in the past. And, of course, you're looking at this and you're saying 5 positives plus 10 negatives leaves you 5 negatives, right? At least I hope that's what you're thinking, putting that over the common denominator of 16. Can this reduce? The answer is no. Solution, negative 5 sixteenths. Okay. All right. So uh, what about this second situation? Well, again, we've got a common denominator. That's good. We need that. We're ready to go ahead and add the numerators. Negative 5 minus 8 over the common denominator of 16. Okay. We've done this. 5 negatives and 8 more negatives, 13 negatives. And we end up with negative 13 sixteenths. Add the numerator and put them over the common denominator. Look, adding fractions is not hard. It's not. But you have to remember how to do them properly. And it's add the numerators, put them over the common denominators. Okay, let's go to the uh, next page of your notes there. Okay, let's uh, look at C. So again, I'm looking and I say, oh, good, I've got a common denominator. That's what I want. I do have one. I am ready to go ahead and add the numerators. Notice each time I am showing the rule step. What are you going to do on your homework? You're going to show the rule step. Okay. If you don't show the rule step, you're going to lose a lot of credit. Show the rule step. Just takes a second, but it helps to keep things straight. All right. Show the rule step. All right. We looked at that. Five positives, 13 negatives. Leaves you eight negatives, and we look at this and say, hey, can I reduce it? Yep, and again, I'm going to be careful because I've got that negative. It is a 2 times 4. 20 is a 4 times 5. The 4 divided by the 4 divides out, and what do we get? A negative 2 fifths, right? Not hard. Not hard. All right, look at D. Got a common denominator, good. I'm ready to add the numerator. It's got minus six. I got the minus sign from right here, right? Right? And then I have a minus 11, right? All over my common denominator of 20. All right, so in this situation, as I look at this now, then I'm going to apply the rule. We already dealt with this situation. Minus a minus is a plus. So what do you have now? I have 6 negatives and 11 positives. Leaves me 5 positives over 20. Can I reduce? Yep. A 20 is a 4 times 5. Be careful here. 5 divided by 5 is 1. And you want that 1 in this case because it maintains the orientation of the fraction. What's the numerator? What's the top of 1? What's the bottom of 4? I can't tell you how many times a student will tell me the answer to this problem is 4. Well, that 4 is in the denominator. The answer is 1 fourth. So be careful there. Don't make that common mistake. Uh, you don't want to do that. All right, let's look at the uh, number 3 here. 
Number three, when mixed numbers are present. Okay, so they can try to make it more difficult on you by giving you a mixed number. Don't worry about that. When mixed numbers are present, convert them to improper fractions. We know how to do this already. Convert them to improper fractions. So we already know how to do this, right? Take the whole number, multiply it times the number in the denominator, add the numerator, and put it over the denominator. We know how to do that. I'm going to maintain my fraction there, right? Now, this is important. This is a, an aspect of solving equations. This has just become this, right? That's the situation. Let me see if I can get this toolbar to disappear now. All right, go away. All right, so the top has just become the bottom. That's good, and that's what you want. All right, so if we continue on here, right? Continuing on, 12 plus 1 is 13, so we have 13 fourths plus 5 fourths, and what are we ready for now? And I hope you're thinking the rule step. 13 plus 5 over 4. All right, now I'm going to add the numerator and put it over the common denominator. And let's reduce, right? An 18 is a 2 times 9 and a 4, 2 times 2. And our 2s divide out. And we end up with 9 halves. Now, do you leave it as 9 halves or do you change it to a mixed number? Um, do you... You know, it depends. If the uh, if the homework section says convert it back to a mixed number, then change it back to four and a half. If it doesn't, then we'll leave it at nine halves. Um, a lot of times, if it has mixed numbers to begin with, we'll go back to mixed numbers. But one is a mixed number and one is not. So I'm going to leave it as an improper fraction. Okay. All right. If you want to do the last one again, pause the video. Um, if you want to do it on your own, if not, here we go. All right. So I've got the three eighths. I'm going to use a little red here, that minus sign. I'm going to stick right there. And remember how I taught you to do these. I told you to use a parentheses, 2 times the 8 plus the 1 over the 8. You need to be careful there. If you don't do it that way, you're going to end up with an issue. All right, so what's our next line? We still have the 3 eighths. What does the right become? 2 times 8 is 16 and 1 is 17. And we have a negative 17 eighths. All right, we've got a common denominator. Let's add the numerators and put them over the common denominator. All right, three positives and 17 negatives. Leaves you what, 14 negatives. And can this be reduced? Yes, and I'm gonna be careful because I have a negative sign. I know my solution's gonna be negative. I'm gonna write it right away. A lot of you guys lose those negative signs. That's not good. 8 is a 2 times 4. And my 2 divided by 2 is 1. Negative 7 fourths. And that's the solution. And that's the lesson. So let me just do a, a little review here. Remember, rational numbers are fractions. Make sure you know the rule step. A plus A over X plus B over X equals A plus B over X. So really, how are you adding fractions? Add the numerators and put them over the common denominator. Remember, I always want you to show the rule step. This is to help you to remember how to add fractions. And it's really, really important. Okay, if you end up with subtraction, it's no big deal. It's just that minus sign ends up in the middle, right? A minus B over X. And we know how to deal with all the positives and negatives. That's not a big deal. Don't forget this aspect. Always look to see if a problem can be reduced. You don't want to lose those little points at the end because you did not look to reduce. And so then we ended up doing a few more examples. Hey, if you get mixed numbers, not a big deal. Convert them. Be careful with the negative mixed number, right? Right over here. And that's the way I taught you. Leave the negative out front. Use a parenthesis for your numerator. And that'll take care of that negative and you'll have the correct situation. Okay? All right. Hope uh, you enjoyed the lesson. Again, it's there now. You can go back and look at it uh, again in the, in the future if you need to. And uh, we'll come into class and take care of homework in there. All right. Have a great night.